Hello guys and welcome to another video with Cass on the Mesma channel. So today I want to briefly talk to you guys about item elevators again. <laughs> so um, this is the design I showed you guys around one or two years ago. Uh, and bad news is if this is not working for you, you built it wrong. Because good news is this is still working with it without any changes. So just for a quick demonstration here, you place your items in here. Uh, this is completely silent and works on demand. Uh, and uh, yeah, 100% 100, 100 reliable as well. This is Minecraft 1.18. I recall also showing you guys this version here, which is slightly uh, different. And uh, for the demonstration, once again, completely silent, 100% reliable. You can see that it will transmit all the items. Uh, but I made a small change here. Uh, and as you can see, the footprint is a little bit small. Uh, it's, it's, it's smaller because I managed to shave off this last layer here, uh, which is not really useful unless you're dealing with a situation like this, where you're, you built your item elevators at a chunk border and you just want to make sure that this one slice not in a different chunk, so everything works uh, in the same place. So for these extreme cases, maybe this uh, this new more compact version could be useful, but other than that, there is nothing really special about it. So all the items have been transmitted, not a single sound. I can show you guys that my volume is indeed turned on. Uh, and finally, I decided to do the same compaction thing to the original design, which is this one here. And uh, this is the new version without the, the last thing back there. So it's pretty much the same design here that I can quickly show you guys how to build. So you want to make sure you have a 2x4 platform here and then make your elevator as high as you want using droppers and not dispensers. Uh, yeah, really as high as you want. I even built this bigger one here just to uh, for testing purposes. And here's going to be your input, normally a hopper facing the, the dropper. So from here, comparator on subtraction mode, so this little lamp list should be on. Add some dust, another solid block, repeater and this guy here. Uh, the changes I made uh, basically mean you have to place one node block here to update uh, this guy and then send a pulse here. So we build this like so. So in the past, see, uh, we would have a server here and a solid block here. And now our first observer is actually going to be underneath the elevator. And from here, you can start building your tower like this. And uh, actually, <laughs> you need another updater here because this, this design is special. So you need this, this rail here for updating. And then you can place tube servers here. I, I need to get used to the new design myself. <laughs> and then you can go like that. Let me just build one more layer. It should go like this. You can even extend it one uh, dropper, ex one extra dropper, dropper if you want, or you can just have the top be like this. And now for the signal to propagate upwards, you can use redstone dust here, uh, just like the original design, but it can also use something that updates like uh, the node blocks themselves. So it can replace this with node blocks. Uh, this guy is gonna sound in the end, so you need to cover this block in order for this guy not to sound. And this should be a little bit more efficient in terms of lag, especially if you're building big, uh, because redstone dust uh, for vanilla Minecraft, as we know, it's not efficient or you can also use rails here and this elevator should be fully functional so let's test it let's place let's say uh, 16 of those i guess it put 16 in there let me check my inventory yes yeah, 16 and totally silent and uh yes <laughs> this is what i wanted to mention uh this hopper here this is not your real input. If you use this as input, there's always going to be one item left in here. What you need to do is to have your input be something else, like a block here, or a hopper here, or a hopper there. And once you do that, let me pick up all the 16 blocks again. And if you put the 16 blocks in there, or whatever amount of items you put, as long as you don't put those inside this hopper here specifically, uh, all the items are going to be here. As you can see here, we have all the 16 no items left inside the system. So for the second variation, you can uh, change all of these blocks, get rid of all of them. Uh, and now here, we can replace this with a block that updates. So uh, a node block here and build a tower, uh, same height as your original item elevator. And then those guys are going to face the droppers like so, solid blocks. 
like this and yeah this should be already working we need to make sure that no items are anywhere we can place our uh, actual input in here and let's see i can actually speed up the game Take, uh right let's make the game five times uh faster with this so yeah another variation this is how we'll build it and there is another trick that you can use especially for this design so this is going to work for this but not for this design uh because well i, I don't want to get into the details <laughs> so basically you can replace this hopper with a dropper to do that you need to also have a observer here so make sure that below the comparator you also have a observer facing this way place back your comparator at one subtraction mode with the solid block here and now you can have your observer here so this is interesting <laughs> you can now place your blocks in here uh, and they're all going to be up here while testing these designs i decided to also investigate the most frequently used item elevators that we have in survival namely these guys in here so i'll start running uh the item elevators in here uh, let me lower the volume for a second here because this is going to be so noisy and i guess i'm gonna have to Take warp, let's do this, why not? Uh, all right, so this is uh, the one uh, with a solid wall or solid column. So the items uh, get ejected from the dropper. Uh, by the way, this is constant, <laughs> this is pretty cool. Let me not sidetrack. Uh, okay, so this goes inside the block and from block to block, it goes from inside walls uh, to, your, to their destinations. This one is different because it uses so sand and water. So this is a bubble column actually that they're going through. Uh, and finally, this one is also going through walls. But uh, the difference here is in the end, we use water to take the items inside uh, the hopper. In the past, we were able to use uh, the, the hoppers themselves in here as part of the wall. Uh, because they were full blocks, but now they have a different 3D model and uh, they, they don't work anymore. Let's see if I get next to these guys, I also pull items. As weird as it sounds, these guys are not easy to make stable at all. I keep mentioning how to, to lift the items using these guys in here. Oh, by the way, I cannot break this block. Uh, but I never talk about how to get the items at the top. You can do a bunch of different stuff when the items get to the top of whatever place you're trying to get your items to. But uh, as it turns out, these guys are very hard to make stable and you're going to lose items very easily. For example, if I change, if instead of having trapdoors here, I just place blocks like I used it to do in survival, uh, I will lose, uh, I can lose full stacks of items. The reason being that uh, in a design like this, when the items get to the top, a lot of the, the, the items, eventually one item will get stuck inside one of these blocks, in between blocks in here, either at the, the top or uh, through the walls. They get stuck in the walls. And because one item gets in there, another item is going to stack to it, and another one, and another one, and eventually you're going to have a full stack of items stuck in a wall, and those items will never move, and they will despawn in here. And a lot of inconsistencies will be found with these designs, which is something that I have never tested, because I assumed that these would work uh, perfectly no matter what. But as it turns out, these guys need space. So you can either have another set of walls in here, and then build your walls like so or you can make it the most compact form that i was able to make this work 100 percent reliable reliably was to use the trapdoors at this height here so this is important this second version here using the bubble columns here they work exactly like 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 you, you see here you can place solid blocks on top and you can even have uh, trapdoors in here or solid blocks those you cannot have trapdoors on the sides you cannot guys you will lose items if you don't have full blocks in here i tried to place the strictly necessary blocks for each design here so blocks in here would be good yes it would be good but it's not really necessary but those guys in here you can even have trapdoors with this one so i, I didn't expect that but uh, if you use this besides being faster uh, as a design uh, this will work uh, one of the most stable versions the third one is a design that i have been trying to come up with for a long time, which is a completely dry item elevator that is cheaper than these ones. Of course, this is not going to be silent. <laughs> if I place a stack of items here, 
Uh, if you're spitting items out of a dropper, uh, those guys are going to make sounds, all right? But this is a completely solid wall, as you can see here, and when it arrives here, instead of using water, I use this little setup here. The chest you see here is not for storage, it's here uh, because of its hitbox, and on top I have a honey block. Uh, and yeah, somehow this combination makes the items go from outside of the elevator safely inside. So you can see how this works now. I can give you guys a second to look at it, how it how it works through the, the hitboxes. Uh, of course, once again in magenta here, I am showing you guys the blocks that are strictly necessary. So the height of the item elevator is actually this one, and then you use the these extra blocks so that no items going to flow anywhere other than uh, their destinations. So yeah, you also need these blocks here, unfortunately. I tried to remove every block in here. It, it, I, it took hours, guys. <laughs> but finally, we have an item elevator that doesn't require uh, that much redstone and can be still used in the nether without, uh, without water. Here is a simple design I made just for fun and just in case you need uh, to really squeeze in your redstone and you really are out of space. <laughs> so this one doesn't have the properties like these guys. It's not, these guys will run the clock as many times as there are items. This one will run the clock as fast as it can. So yeah, <laughs> but it's compact. So uh, basically this guy here will sense items in there and uh, it will activate this clock here to power the dropper. Uh, in Bedrock Edition, we can probably use a solid block right here. Uh, yeah, and then the, your dropper in there, and then uh, yeah, this clock works. And once the storage is completely empty, then the storage is going to turn on and stop the clock again. Uh, before we end the video, I want to show you guys two more ideas uh, that might inspire you guys to make your own designs. So uh, with this one, let me demonstrate here. Uh, I believe I showed you guys this design before. I believe with my potion brewing thing. So this is basically a design that allows you to place items uh, directly inside the dropper or maybe have those transported to uh, hoppers in here. So what this does is I'm using a snow powder block in here. So this is not snow, this is snow powder. I can actually collect this with a, uh, with a bucket. So yeah, this is a, a regular dropper and as I output items, these is basically making sure that the items don't fly everywhere and they actually, they also uh, get uh, aligned to the center of the block more or less. So this basically prevents items from getting stuck uh, to the side walls of the build and then you can transport the items using water streams as you can see here. This is old design by the way. Um, uh, you can use uh, ice blocks in here, back ice or blue ice in here. Once again here, every time you have a transition so that water doesn't flow back, I'm using um, uh, top slabs in here. And then finally here we have the fast transportation with the bubble water elevator. And finally here we have a simple setup uh, with uh, hoppers working at double speed. Because I used this in my iron farm that I will show you guys uh, in another video. And finally just for fun i want to show you guys this design uh so yeah here i have just a bunch of uh choker boxes full with very valuable items uh and uh, this let me tp i don't know exactly the, what the coordinates are maybe this uh to the top of the map so this is basically a uh a dropper tower of for a item elevator that goes all the way from the bottom of the map all the way to the top of the map uh, and here I have a command block just to place a rest on torch and fire this system. So this is supposed to be a instant uh, trans item transportation. So you saw what the items are down there. And if I press this button, you can see that uh, this will quickly shake. And there we go. We have transported this choker box full of, uh, of ferns from the bottom of the map instantly to the top. So 27 stacks of items in under one tick. So Ta-da! <laughs> Here we go, guys. So this is instant transportation. So this is not perfect or anything. It's just something that I was playing with because uh, somewhere last year I published a video talking about uh, instant uh, dropper lines, but they were horizontal and this one is vertical. So just showing you guys the possibilities that we can do here. So yeah, this is what this video was all about. So I hope that you guys enjoyed. I haven't published much videos, uh, many videos in uh, 2021 and I hope to change it this year. Get back on that horse, right? <laughs> so I hope you guys keep supporting my channel and myself and watching my videos. 
Other than that, thank you very much for watching. I hope that the content of this video was useful for you in some way. Hope to see you soon. Subscribe if you're not. Goodbye.